Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Classroom 20 Live. My name is Lorna Costantini. I know that Kim Case and Peggy George, my co-host today, are so excited to see you all here. We congratulate you for taking time off on Saturday morning or afternoon to be with us. It really affirms to us that uh, you are um, enjoying and sharing the information that we're providing to you. Our topic today is Succeeds to Success using Skype, and our special guests are Paula Noggle and Jan Wells. And I know that you're going to love this presentation because you're going to get concrete ideas of what to do in your classroom. Special thanks to Tammy Moore in the uh, chat window because she's providing closed captioning. So please let know anyone know that if they're having uh, visual audio, excuse me, audio issues that or language, uh, Tammy comes and uh, helps us every Saturday morning to provide the closed captioning. So thank you, Tammy. Your name should be there every morning because you are one of our special show hosts as well. So some of you said in the conversations as we got started that you were new to the session. So at the bottom of the participants window, right here, the green check. Those people who are new, can you just give me a green check and so we'll get an idea? Who we've got? Great, new people. Wonderful, thanks. <laughs> a lot of uh, interest, thank you very much. I know Kim is our technical wizard and so is uh, Peggy. And I, terrible typist, but we will try and help you as much as we can through the session. If any questions come up, right here in the chat window, click, type your message here and click send, but make sure it's send to this room so that uh, everyone can see your message. If you did find out how to do the drop down menu, and talk to someone specifically one on one or to us, please recognize that all the moderators see all the conversations today. Uh, we're going to get you busy on the uh, whiteboard in a minute, but uh, if you do have a USB headset and time permits, uh, we have access to uh, audio as well. So on the bottom window here where it says talk, there's a microphone. You need to click it on to speak. It becomes yellow active, and when you finish, you click it off. Uh, at the bottom of the participants window, here's some fun some emoticons. So if you want to add applause or a smiley face or you don't agree with a, a thumbs down, that's where you can get uh, busy during the session. And if you want to re ask a question or come to the mic, over here is a green hand with the arrow up. Click on that, you'll see a number comes in front of your uh, name, and we'll recognize you either we're asking you to type in the chat or give you the mic access. So that's one way to get through. Um, surprising little thing, you probably won't remember this at the end, but this little window here where it's blue is to say, I'm away from my computer for a minute it is not the way to exit. If you want to exit the session, you need to close out Illuminative Live and your web browser. So we'll try and remind you that near the end of the show. Again, the green check and the red X, we have some fun doing some poll questions. So we'll be asking you to do that as well. So now we're going to get you busy. And Kim is going to get everybody whiteboard tools. And on the left of the whiteboard, all kinds of icons for you. But this one right here is a little blue one wand with a red starburst. If you click on that, we're going to take you over here. And I'm ahead of myself. So when we get to this point and we ask you to do this, which everybody's doing now, show us where you are in the world. And I backtrack in a minute. So just click on that blue wand with the red starburst. You get a little red dot. I know we have someone in Moscow, someone in France today, someone in Australia. It's always exciting to see the widespread and the connection with people that we have. You know, I'm not sure someone in the in Europe. Maybe you could type in the window where you're from. That'd be helpful on the world map. So great. Now I gotta go backtrack and do things the way I normally do. And that is providing we're not doing application sharing. We don't need that. But here's an important thing for you to remember. And I'm going to demonstrate live binders in a minute. But we do have a website, probably you're familiar with it, that have all the recordings today, the full Illuminate session, auto recording, and an MP4 file that uh, you can find out our website and all our resources are available for you after the show. So if someone couldn't make the show and you want to share it with them, come to our website as live.classroom20.com. And so if I can get uh, Kim to set up the web tour and drop in the link for live binders, I'm going to give you a chance to see. So you really recognize we're doing a lot of uh, organizing for you. And uh, it'll help you know, sort of focused 
how the information is presented. We're using something called Live Binders, which we think is a fantastic application, and it's just loading up now. So if you have a white screen for a minute, it will just take a second. And I'm not seeing it, so there we go. So I'll just quickly show you that um, there are two tabs there. We have the tab switching every week, so we're going to have them all together for a month. But there's a very quick idea of how it does. If you click on any of those links, you'll go directly to an interface where you can see the website, except for Twitter and specifically our website. But it's a great way to find all the resources that Paula and Jan are going to share with us and the ones that uh, we've added for the day. So it's a really um, powerful tool that we have for you. And I know that Peggy and Kim are going to be dry, dropping that link into the chat window as we go through the day. So thanks, Kim, for setting that up. Now, just want to put you to work. So uh, our first question, our poll question today is, um, with your green check or your red X, is help us out with, have you used Skype personally to connect with other people online? These questions help Paula and uh, Jan uh, focus their presentation for you. So lots of people have done that, and some people are brand new to Skype. You have to download it, and you're absolutely going to love this application. So I'm going to take a look at the results now, because most people have had a chance to vote and publish them. So almost 56%, a large percentage of us today, are using Skype personally. So to curb those votes, and go to the next poll question, which is, have you used Skype in your classroom to connect with other classes? A little bit different here. Are you using Skype in your classroom to connect with other classes around the world? Bottom of the participants window is the green check and the red X. When I click on that, you can cast your vote. Okay, let's take a look at the results. So, Jan and Paula, you're really going to have a, a captive audience today because over 60% have not done this. So let's clear the votes again and go to our last poll question of the day. Have you used Skype to share book discussions or interviews with other classes? So it's a green check if you have and a red X if you haven't. We've got most people voting, so again, let's look at the results. And again, a bigger number here, Paul and Jen, 72% have not shared uh, interviews with other classes using Skype. So, thank you, everyone, for taking a minute to vote and play around with that world map. Again, we are really excited that you've taken the time to be here. I want to introduce uh, our guests today, Paula Nava and Jan Wells. Paula is in Louisiana and Jan is in Kansas. They're famous for their presentation, Seeds to Success Using Skype. And I know if you haven't heard the K-12 online, uh, presentation. We're going to find that link in our live binders and I really suggest that you're going to enjoy that as well. And their website here is listed for you and that link will be in the live binders. So thank you very much Paula and Jan for coming and uh, being with us today. I know that you have tons of information to share so I'm going to give the mic over to you and if you wouldn't mind starting the discussion, if this works for you, what is Skype? And why is it a good tool to use in the classroom? And now I'm going to turn over the mic to Jan and Paul to, Paul to um, start the presentation. Again, thanks, everybody. Good morning, all. Uh, we want to thank Classroom 2.0 Live for inviting us here this morning to share with you. Um, <clears throat> Paul and I have been using Skype um, for over two years together collaboratively. And Skype is a tool that just lets the kids, students, adults see how close we really are, but yet we are still so far away. Um, they communicate, they collaborate, they get ideas, they share. Um, it's quick. It doesn't have to be lengthy. Um, I think as we go through our tour, 
through our presentation, you'll get a more sense of what um, Skype is like for in the classroom. So, Paula, I'm going to get started. We want to welcome you all to our presentation, Seeds to Success with Skype. My name is Jan Wells, and I teach fourth graders in Kansas, and Paula Noggle, who teaches fourth graders in New Orleans, and I are Skype buddies, and we'd like to tell you how that all came about. During the summer, and I, we should be seeing slides right now. Do I need to switch something? I'm sorry. Oh, perfect. Perfect. During the summer of 2009, let me catch up. During the summer of 2009, I was trying to find a way to connect my class with another class. I didn't have Skype in mind at that time. I was just trying to find a connection. Through a Ning started by Jen Wagner in California, I found Paula. We both had joined a group within her Ning called Skype Buddies within days of each other. I added a discussion to that group explaining that I was looking for a fourth grade class to connect with, and Paula answered it. We chatted back and forth using the Ning discussion section several times and then traded email addresses. We decided to talk to each other on Skype to see how we could connect our classes. Unfortunately, <clears throat> unfortunately, the Ning no longer exists, but don't worry. There are other ways to find connections. Here are some of those ways. All of these resources and more will be available to you in the live binder that's provided to you during this presentation. Jen Wagner was hosting a collaborative project called Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs. So Paula and I registered for the project and then brainstormed how we could use Skype to participate. We chose to do a choral reading. We decided Paula's class would read the left-hand pages of the book Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs. And my class would read the right-hand pages during a Skype call. Before the big day, our classes did a practice Skype call to introduce ourselves to each other. Needless to say, everyone was a little shy at first, but slowly got more comfortable in front of the camera. It went pretty well and allowed us to learn some things about sound levels, lighting, and camera usage. What follows is a portion of the video taken on the big day. The video was shot by a student in Paula's class using a flip camera and therefore is a little jumpy, and we had an audio glitch, but we are proud of our first effort. Good morning, everyone. This is Paula Noggle from New Orleans. Um, showing in your web tour now, you should see a, uh, one of my blog posts that I wrote, and if you could scroll down to the first video and click on the play button. Each person has to do this individually. And for about two minutes, just watch the beginning of the video so you get an idea of what was going on. And remember that this is being filmed by a student videographer. So um, when you're finished, just if you would click on the smiley face on the, the participants window, about two minutes. You don't have to watch the whole thing. Thanks.
Okay, does everybody get to see a little something? I know some of you are saying it, it's not working, and I apologize for that. Um, it is not a YouTube video, so I don't know what the problem is, but um, hopefully you got to see a little bit of it. And I wanted to tell you that also at that time, when we did the Skype call, I decided to have my students um, sing, do a little uh, presentation for Jan's class. It was kind of a surprise. So we sang to them, God Bless USA. And that is the second video listed there on the web tour. So if you want to click on the play button, the play arrow, on the second video, and again, watch about a minute or two, and then we'll rejoin here. Give me a smiley face when you're done. Okay, has everybody had a chance to do that? Okay, thank you. Um, I had a question that came by from Carolyn. Carolyn, I was holding the webcam and panning back and forth so that Jan's students in her classroom could see uh, us on the Skype call. And as I was doing that, I had a student using a flip camera videotaping our actual Skype presentation. So yes, I was controlling the webcam, but I had a, a student filming what we were doing using a flip cam. OK, continuing on. For our second project, we chose to do a choral reading of The Midnight Ride of Paula Bear. Oh, let me catch up the slides here. Oh, OK, go back one. I'm sorry. Hold on. We're going to stop right there. We missed a, we missed a slide, but that's OK. Uh, the Midnight Ride of Paul Revere, since both Jan and I who teach fourth grade, who's studying the Northwest, the Northeast region at the same time. Um, we um, actually took turns. Um, my class would do one verse of the poem, and her class would do another verse. And we did it through Skype first. And then uh, we decided to take that one step further and do a collaborative voice thread. So our students made um, original artwork for it and we recorded them um, reciting the poem on a voice thread. And thank you, Peggy, for dropping that link in. OK, during our third Skype call, we participated in another project of Jen, Jen Wagner called the OREO Project. And it stands for our really exciting online project. And yes, we do use OREO cookies. I think she had to call it that because of copyright infringements or something. But anyhow, what happens here is that uh, the students get two turns to stack as many Oreo cookies as they can. And it's tied into math standards because you have the kids record how many uh, Oreo cookies they stack. And you find a class average for all the stacking that goes on. And then Jan has a, um, a wiki or a website or a Google Doc or someplace where everybody uh, puts their information so that you end up being able to compare your results to results of classrooms all over the United States and several other countries. Well, Jan, Jan, Jan Wells, not Jan, Jan Wagner, Jan Wells and I decided, oh, well, let's do, let's have our kids do their Oreo stacking via Skype. And we decided to do that. And it came out really cute. We had our kids stacking their Oreo cookies against each other. And as you can see here, they, they can't readjust the stack. You have to keep piling on the cookies until they fall over. Once they fall over, you're done. Okay. So these are some stills that we took during this. 
and there are many ways that you can use it. And of course, the fun thing to do at the end is to eat the Oreo cookies. I actually um, do an activity when we do this project each year. I have a licking contest. And you've never seen anything funnier in your life than to watch a classroom of about 28 fourth graders open an Oreo cookie and lick the icing off it as fast as they can. They cannot scrape it with their teeth. They have to lick it off. <clears throat> and here is what it looks like when um, uh, this is on my Promethean board. The big screen is uh, what we are seeing in our classroom. The little screen down in the right hand, I'm sorry, left hand corner is what is being picked up from my webcam and being shown on uh, Jan's end. So we have to be conscious of making sure we stay in the webcam box when they're presenting. And that takes, you know, it takes a while to get used to, but they they get to be experts at it very quickly. All right. I've also used Skype in other ways besides um, just with Jan. Oh, there's some of those. Okay. Um, one of the other ways I did was I collected with uh, connected with a class in Montana last year. She um, the teacher taught fifth grade, and I had fourth grade, and she wanted to try Skype. So we decided that her students would flash multiplication facts for my kids in front of the webcam. So every day, uh, four to five of my students would filter through the hot seat in front of our webcam and get flash their multiplication flat, uh, facts from a class in Montana. Another thing, and here's a picture of Alex sitting in the hot seat uh, getting his multiplication group. And of course, they love doing that. Another thing we did was uh, my district did uh, celebrate a local author day. High school students selected a book written by a Louisiana author to read to a classroom via Skype. I signed up to participate, and since I've been encouraging other classes in my school to give Skype a try, I invited a first grade teacher in my building to bring her students up to my classroom for the Skype call. And as happens when using Skype for the first time, the first graders were a little awestruck that they could talk to someone through the interactive whiteboard. They were having a great time, and as my fourth graders answered questions posed by the high school students, the first graders started feeling more comfortable realizing how Skype is conversation, just like on a regular phone. And eventually, they got into it, too. And as you can see, they enjoyed it and were having a great time, and they talked about the experience for quite a few days afterwards. OK, Ms. Wells, your turn. OK, mic on. <clears throat> Other ways that um, I have used Skype, uh, we know that connections can come in all shapes and sizes. Last year, we Skyped with eighth graders in New Jersey comparing our school or community and weather with them. It was fun having um, a different age level. And there wasn't an age difference as far as how the kids reacted and uh, looked forward to the call. It was exciting on both ends, first call or, or have had more than one call. Here, third graders near Tulsa, Oklahoma, are celebrating the 50th birthday of the Dr. Seuss book, Green Eggs and Ham, by reading their favorite part and sharing an illustration. These students are located about 45 minutes from us here in Kansas. It's their first time using Skype. They are introducing themselves and telling us something special about themselves. We even discovered that we had cousins in our classes. That same teacher and I had Skyped again um, the previous year and also had cousins in our classes, which is just crazy. But we are 45 minutes apart. Um, in this picture, you can see they are actually using um, a headset mic and just holding the headset with the mic out so they can um, you know, be picked up on the mic. And so you, know, you use what you have. Um, now we're going to go to um, a web tour. And this is another time where I was, um, my fourth graders were interviewing or being interviewed by a pre-service teacher. 
So on my blog, if you would scroll down, um, are you able to put that in there? Or do you want me to put that in there? I can put that in there. I remember how. Okay. It is not the first video here, so if you would use your scroll bar and scroll down to Skype with pre-service teacher. And this is just, uh, I think, less than a minute, but if you would watch this, you'll hear um, how my fourth graders were responding to him about Skype. And then give me a smiley face to let me know that you're done. Okay, I think some of us are finishing up. So I'm going to close this web tour and take you back. Early this year, Paula and I connected our classes. Her students had created a survey with four questions. And through Skype, my students were able to give them immediate, de immediate data to collect. Whoops. All right. Um, we're going to go back to the web tour. As a part of our math curriculum, our class, nope, I don't think that's right. I'm sorry. I think it was just the wrong screen. Thank you for being patient. Oops. Oh. oh, am I clicking the wrong button? See, anyone can do this. Yes, nice review. <laughs> All right, here we go. As part of our math curriculum, our classes conducted a collaborative math graphing project. To start, both classes brainstormed questions to survey the other about and put them into a Google document, and we exchanged them. Next, each class, next, each class completed the survey or tally chart and returned them. Then the students took the data and created bar graphs and circle graphs. The data was compared and interpreted, and questions and conclusions were made. It was interesting to hear each group um, it was interesting to hear each group question or wonder why a particular piece of data was high or low. For example, there was a restaurant uh, popular in Louisiana that when we got the survey in Kansas, we'd not heard of. So it got no votes. And so that sparked um, thought, wonder, in um, Ms. Noggle's class as to why there were so many in the other category or none in that category. Another one was with a country singer. Um, a few country singers that were on our list uh, were not necessarily the favorites of theirs, and they wondered why Taylor Swift wasn't on that list of favorite singers. Also this year, my fourth graders continued making connections 
new and old. If we could go to the web tour. I'd like you to see a video. It is um, uh, called the Skyping Tutor. It would be the third one. I'm sorry that they weren't in order for you. Okay. Back in the fall, I came across the Skyping Reading Tutor, Joanne Kaminsky. She's a reading specialist who volunteers in classrooms by reading books and motivating them to read. So if you would view this, this is nine minutes. Just view um, you know, a couple minutes of it, maybe two minutes. You will see I interrupt them in the middle because I had a last minute thought of, hey, I forgot to get my camera out. So um, don't be startled when you hear me um, interrupt. So go ahead and view and then give me a smiley face when you can. Okay, well, I will go on. Um, some are not able to see this. Um, I'm not sure if I should have been pushing play or that you should have been pushing play. Don't know. Um, but this was a great experience. She was lively. Um, actually, there on my blog, I put a little information about um, what the experience was like and how it was, how it came across to the kids. Also, in November, my students were rehearsing for their fourth grade music program. I contacted Paula to see if we could sing one of our songs kind of as a dress rehearsal. The song was called Goober Peas. It was a fun song, uh, which also included some movement. It happened that Paula's class had been uh, working on a poem, a rec uh, reciting a poem, and they wanted to um, share that with us. It's called If I Were a Pilgrim Child. And both classes enjoyed the performance and being even the audience member. If you scroll um, up, it is the first one on uh, my page called Audience Opportunities, Goober Peas, and Poem. So if you click on that, I think it is just under two minutes. And enjoy. Give me a smiley face when you're done. I'm Charlie. I'm Sarah. Hi, Charlie and Sarah. Hi. We're going to be singing a song about uh, about a time during the Civil War. Uh, the song is called um, Goober Peas, followed by the Goober Gallop. And um, performing this tonight at our, at our concert. Sitting by the roadside on a summer's day. Chatting with my messmates, passing time away. Dying in the shadows, underneath the trees. Goobers are delicious, eating goober bees. Bees, 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 eating goober bees. Goodness are delicious, eating goober bees. When the doors and passes, the soldiers have a rule to dry out their lives. Another class found a chanty near the bees is going at your grinders, eating goober bees. For this Thanksgiving, a song called If I Were a Pilgrim Child by Rowena Bennett. If I were a pilgrim child, red and white or gray, I would have kept my turkey wild for any living day.
Okay, so that was um, Goober Pease and the poem, If I Were a Pilgrim Child. Another activity that's been successful is having reading buddies with a first grade class in Wyoming. Her students uh, read uh, books cre that they've created and read passages to help with their uh, word development and fluency. And my students who have needed more practice, maybe with reading fluency, have read picture books to them. So it's been a win-win in uh, those situations. All right, Ms. Paula. OK. Um, other ways that I have used Skype um, is to actually Skype into workshops. Um, Jan and I have both done Skype presentations for our districts or in our states or whatever. And we always try to get each other to be available to Skype in, even if it's just for two minutes, just to show the participants in the workshop how to do it. I've also done things like uh, Skype into Educom, which is held in Philadelphia, when all my Twitter buddies are up there and I'm in Louisiana and feeling like I want to be part of the group. I ask one of them if I can Skype in on their phone, and they say, yeah, so I get to join in the crowd. So those are fun ways to use Skype in your own professional life. Okay. The new version of Skype now allows for five video conferencing um, calls to be going on simultaneously. Um, you, can, you can Skype without video with a bunch of people, but to, actual have, to actually have the video, um, I, it's limited to five at this time. So um, Avia Dunzinger, who's been a guest on this show and teaches in Canada, had put out a Twitter that she wanted to try out the new, Skype, new version of Skype and who would be interested. And of course, I jumped on that. And so what she did was she had five classes. It was around the holidays. So the five classes that joined in um, did the Christmas Carol jingle bells uh, to and for each other. Uh, we had practiced the day before and really that, wait, if we all sang Jingle Bells at the same time, <laughs> you couldn't hear what the other people were doing. So we each took a turn singing a verse of Jingle Bells, and it worked out really great. Um, we probably should have gone for a Guinness World Book record, because Avia did it, I believe, in her auditorium with all 700-plus 700 students in attendance. Um, my kids did, um, I had my class. And um, I think a kindergarten class come visit. And then the other classes just had their regular classes. Um, this is what my Promethean board looked like when the call was in progress. And unfortunately, you're only seeing four videos. And you can see the one is having trouble. You see the, the spinning circle of death. Uh, we had some issues, as always happens with new technology. The one gentleman came in and out, and the fifth person who was there at the very beginning of the call, by the time we actually got to the part where we were doing the singing, lost his connection. So it happens. So you make sure you always have a plan B for a day when you plan a Skype call and it might not work, it might not connect, there might be some problem. Maybe the person on the other end got the, the time zone difference kind of mixed up and you know, things happen. So just be prepared for that. So this shows the kids, you know, reacting to what's going on as they're singing. I think this was at the point where Avia had all 700 of her kids yelling and screaming at us. And it was great. And as you can see, I, again, I have a student putting one of our flip cams to good use and recording our session. Okay. Um, oh, and I'm sorry. And one other thing I wanted to say about here, I believe one of my other uh, friends is in the audience that I'm going to do this with, Terry Ray from Colorado, Jan Wells, myself, uh, Len Horn, who's in Arizona but couldn't be present today because he's at a chess tournament. And I forgot who my fifth person is right now. My students are currently 
doing research on various aspects of Mardi Gras and getting ready to present via Skype to four other classrooms in the United States and Canada to teach them about the wonderful Louisiana tradition of Mardi Gras. We are doing everything from sharing beads and king cake with them to showing them how to second line. And unfortunately, I didn't get to do it before this presentation, but if you check out my blog in the next couple of weeks, I'm sure it'll be up there. Okay, what other ways can you use Skype? Okay, well, you could use Skype to gather information about a state, a region, or a country. To do collaborative projects, like some of the ones Jan and I have talked about today. For celebrations and performances, from singing to acting to putting on a little play, reader's theater, all sorts of different things. To conduct interviews. This is something I want to do more of. I want to find some experts to bring into my classroom via Skype. And there is a website that we will share with you in the live binders um, that shows you how to do that. To see what's happening in another classroom. One of the uh, a fun activities is just to take your webcam and point it outside your classroom window and show the world what you see in your environment. I am in a suburban school district. Jan is in a rural school district. So what we see outside our window is quite different. To read to younger students, that's a great experience. Or to even have younger students share their favorite book with an older group. To invite an expert into your classroom. How about this? Have another teacher teach a lesson to your students. We all have our little areas of expertise. Why reinvent the wheel? Just get them to come teach it to your kids via Skype. Living in southeast Louisiana, uh, my class last year became Hurricane Katrina experts. They were interviewed five times last year by various classes across the United States who wanted in first-hand information, primary source, information about the Hurricane Katrina experiences. I mean, you know, we don't want to talk about disasters, but they happen, and sometimes the kids need to know exactly what it means, such as one of my little guys was gone from his home for two years before he got back. How about this one? To conduct parent conferences. Maybe instead of bringing the parents into the room, if they can't make it, you could ask them to hook up on a Skype call with you. To include parents who can't attend a performance or an event because of their time schedule. Have them log into Skype, get your webcam up and going, and let them see it. And Brian uh, Crosby in, I believe he's in Arizona, has <clears throat> written about this. He had a student with leukemia, and she was able to attend class via Skype. Okay, Jan and I, I'm sorry, the tools that you will need to do, did I just skip something? Hold on. Okay, yeah. Uh, the tools that you will need to do this are, of course, you need to download Skype. You need to have a webcam. A lot of um, computers have built-in webcams, but I like having a separate one so that I can move it around and manipulate it uh, more freely. Excuse me, you also need a microphone. Um, headset with a built-in mic is great when you're doing one or two kids in front of the webcam at a time, but you need some kind of a freestanding mic if you're doing a big session. Okay. Um, excuse me a moment. Okay. Jan and I enjoyed connecting our classes through Skype. We showed our kids that we were willing to take risks in front of them so that we hopefully could connect our two classes. Each time we used Skype, our learning curve improved. We got a little better, and we felt a little more comfortable. Our students got to see that while there are differences among us from, di from people from different places, there are also many similarities. Jan and I blogged, tweeted, and in-serviced others to share our uh, successes and that led to even more connections. Our students became empowered. By the end of the year, by the end of last year, all Jan and I had to do was arrange a time. And the kids would set the topic, do the research, draft the questions, um, 
set it up, get it all ready and going, and take, you know, roll with it. Um, I'm sorry, I just lost my thought. Okay. Um, uh, they would also write about the experience and share it out. The use of this tool also extended beyond our classrooms as our students told their parents about Skype and showed them how to set up Skype accounts and use them at home. Because I teach in southeastern Louisiana, I have a lot of students who have connections to um, Central America. And I had one of my students last year who set up Skype with his aunt in Honduras. And that was neat to have him talk about that. OK, so um, make sure that you go ahead and try it. And I'm going to send the ball back to Jan. We have established five goals that we would like to see you complete within the next month. Goal number one, set up a Skype account. This weekend, download Skype on your computer and set up an account. Goal two, use Skype at home. Within the next two weeks, find a relative or friend or another teacher you know who is willing to try Skyping with you while you're at home. Call Paula and I. Goal three, connect with another class. Goal four, oh, on goal three, um, I'm sorry, goal three, connect with another class. Then within the next month, find another class to Skype with at school. And goal four, establish your first mini project. Make the first Skype call short, about five minutes in length, and have a topic to discuss, such as comparing and contrasting where you live, or have a few questions ready to ask each other, such as what is your favorite color or what is your favorite ice cream flavor. And then goal five, share your success. Post, tweet about it, or send us an email. We want to hear your stories. We can be reached at Paula Noggle, P-L-N-A-U-G-L-E at gmail.com. And I'm sorry, it's there on the screen. And then Jan Wells, janwells4 at gmail.com. On the Seeds to Success with Skype website, you will find additional information and resources, just as with the Live Binders. We hope you have enjoyed our presentation and that you will take us up on the challenge. It won't always go as you plan, but it will be an adventure, and you and your students will gain so much from the experience. Good luck and get Skyping. So we'd like to open this up, uh, Kim, Lorna, Peggy, for um, questions that we might have time for. Great. If you'd like to ask a question that hasn't already been addressed in the chat, you can click on the hand with the green up arrow, and then we'll give you the microphone. You can also type your um, questions in the chat or comments, and we can address them that way as well. So if there's something that you have asked that we've missed, just let us know. And Irene, when I've given you the mic, go ahead. You click on the mic button in the left to activate your mic. OK, did I do it? You sure did. Can you hear me? Oh, awesome. How does Twitter work with Skype? If Skype is on the screen, what are, um, what are the kids doing with Twitter? No, I don't have my students using I'm sorry, that got to Mecca. I don't have my students. Twitter, what I meant when I said that in the presentation, is that I Twitter about our experiences that we've done in class, uh, via uh, contacted me via Twitter. I've made a lot of connections through using Twitter. We don't actually have Twitter going during any Skype. I have not, I actually did set up a uh, Twitter account, but I have not used it with my fourth graders. You can post a link in Twitter or in Plurk, and then um, they could click on that to see what you're sharing. Great question, Irene. Did that um, did you have did that answer your question? Yes, it did. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much for asking. 
and it's great to see some fellow San Antonians with us among Mr. Cantrell. Uh, we've given you the mic. Go ahead. Hello there, Paul and Jan. Thank you. That was great. Hey, I'm uh, on my way out. This is my year of retiring, but I'm thinking that I would use Skype as a way to contact uh, kids just to build their self-esteem and to uh, you know, create some interest in school because many of them are very, you know, turned off by school. Do any of do either one of you have any uh, information or any individuals who are using Skype in that manner? Thank you. I have a friend um, that teaches in Nebraska. She actually teaches at a virtual high school. And yes, yeah, she does have that um, one boy in particular I know we've talked about that she has had him use Skype to um, connect with her husband who happens to be a patrolman in the area. And um, her husband and this young man have created quite a bomb via Skype. He has actually finished high school and he is now enrolled in the police academy. Awesome, awesome. And I can definitely see lots of great ways to connect to build students' self-esteem um, by the connections that they make using Skype and some of the other web conferencing tools that are free and accessible out there. And Susie, we've given you the mic. Yes, I had a problem. The first few times I used Skype, I had like Skype stalkers appear, and as soon as I would log in, these strange names appeared, and I wanted to make, I'd want to be sure that wouldn't happen at home, or at school, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, my, one of my first contacts was a stalker, and you just go into your settings and end up blocking that person, but it does happen. Um, what's so funny is that at school, you know, I have Skype open a lot, and you get the little notification down in the right-hand corner of my Promethean board, board and it'll say, Jan Wells is online. And it's, you know, at the beginning of the year when the kids you know, are first learning about Skype, they think every time that pops up that she and I are going to chit-chat to each other. <laughs> and, <laughs> and then they go, oh, Miss Wells is online, Miss Wells. And I'm like, yeah, but we're not Skyping with her today. So the kids learn to tune it out. But yes, occasionally, just like in anything else, you know, you get the, you got to teach them about cyber safety, teach them how to set settings and, and what to do to block the inappropriateness. I had a gentleman one morning, I thought he was a teacher in Australia, he and I were chit chatting back and forth and he goes, how about if we just not talk and turn on our webcams and I went, okay, I've had enough of you. <laughs> oh yeah. There's a setting that you can change in there. It's different um, spot on the Mac versus the PC, but you can change a setting so um, that can help eliminate that. I haven't had any of that this year, but I know when I first started, until I got it set right, um, I did have those show up. But thank you. That's a good point. Thank you, Susie. And C.H. Parker, you have the mic. I saw the mic activated, but we didn't hear you, C.H. Parker, so if you'd like to try again. Okay, they're asking are there any safety issues or concerns or tech issues. Um, and I know that any time you try something, yeah, that's a great suggestion of trying out these um, different tech connections and tech tools before the actual live session. But um, do either of you want to talk about some of the um, security issues or tech issues you've experienced? Sure. I think one of the things is important that you do the connecting before you have kids, um, just like you would if you were using um, a website or something in the classroom, uh, checking it out. Checking it out at school versus just at home, because sometimes things work at home and then at school you know, it's blocked or whatnot, um, and, and have that plan and then a backup plan. Um, 
you know, we've had the technical issues of the camera not working or the voice not working or plugging something in and, oops, that's not the right spot for it. And just we actually helped each other out um, either through chat or um, being able to see one piece or the other to help brainstorm, okay, try this and see if that works to, um, to solve the problem. But as far as security, um, I have felt that um, all the pre-work we've done has helped knowing that it's safe. And then just trial and error in that just keep trying and each time you just feel more successful at how this works and tweaking how you want to have it set up. I think I went off on another little area, but hope that answered your question. Let me just add that, yeah, it's, it's scary. Anytime you try something for the first time and you feel like you've put so much importance on it, and if it, if it doesn't work, if it's, if it's, you know, just a bad connection day with uh, maybe you've had some bandwidth issues, or one time I Skyped with a girl in North Carolina and they were having a horrendous thunderstorm and she came on and she was on for about five seconds and I don't know if, I mean, tower got hit or what, but they were definitely gone. So it's going to happen. Just be prepared and know that, you know, there are things going to go wrong. And like, you know, always have a plan B. Have something fun for the kids to do because they were looking forward to Skyping. You know, have a, a, a fun little activity for the next 10 minutes before you go right back into the book work because, you know, they were going to have like a little break from traditional um, academics. So, you know, trying to think of it that way. And what I always do at the beginning of the year, I always Skype with a girl across the hallway from me. I run back and forth and go, okay, is my, is my video camera focused? You know, I'm sorry, my webcam focused? How is the sound? How is it looking through? You know, and we do that just because, you know, we have to disconnect everything from one year to the next. So when I set it all up again the following year, I want to make sure it's still working properly. Great. Thank you. I'm going to go ahead and formally close out the show. We want to be mindful of your time, and we appreciate everyone for joining us. And then we'll come back to these questions that we might have missed and hope that you'll stay on after the show for the post show. Um, we'll come back, and we want to let you know that on February the 12th, we'll have a very special guest, Bill Farragher, who will be talking about teaching the I generation and TPAC. So we do hope that you'll join us for that session, same time next Saturday. And those are some of the I, um, guests that we're going to have lined up. We're working on some other things in the future. And Steve Hargadon on February the 15th will be interviewing David Perkins on Making whole, Learning Whole and Kevin Kelly on What Technology Wants. And that will be the week after our next. Next week he'll be at the TCE conference in Austin. And when you exit the session today, a survey link will open automatically in your browser. And you may have to clear previous data. but we do we hope that you'll give us some feedback on today's session, as well as future sessions, topics, and guests that you'd like to see. You can also, in that survey, request a professional development certificate. And if for some reason the survey doesn't automatically open, you can always email us at live at classroom20.com. And we will get the certificate out to you during the week. Uh, Peggy takes care of that. So give us a few days or so to um, definitely connect with you and send that out. We have to get the results from uh, Illuminate. So it takes a few days or so. We also have secured an iTunes U channel through Peggy's Connections. And if you'd like to access that channel, you can go directly to tinyurl.com slash CR20Live, iTunes U, all one word, CR20Live, iTunes U. And that will open up the iTunes U channel directly in your browser. And then you can subscribe to the video, the MP3, and the chat log, and take us with you wherever you go. And we also want to extend a very special thanks to Paula and Jan today, as well as to Steve Argonon, who is the founder of our web series and Future of Education. And thanks to you for sharing your Twitter IDs and your blog posts and your IDs, your questions, and everything in the chat today. And to Illuminate and Learn Central for providing our forum.
for us to meet this and each and every week. And if you'd like to ask a question that hasn't already been addressed, we would love for you to uh, take the mic. Just click on the hand with the green up arrow, and we'll give you the mic. Or you can continue to post your information in the chat. And the certificate link will auto open automatically in your browser for you. Robert, you don't need to um, do anything to activate that survey. It will open when you exit the session when we finish up today. And Irene, if you had another comment or question, we've given you the mic. Um, thanks. I, I am trying to figure out where the webcam is at. Like if you have a laptop that projects onto a screen and you Skype from your laptop, like how do you get do you have to have another camera that focuses on the kids? Like how does that work? You, you would have to you turn, have the, turn the cam the um, your laptop so that usually it's a little tiny square kind of in the edge frame of your laptop. Like I'm on a MacBook and I'm looking at mine. And uh, you would have to maneuver. And when you're on Skype, like I showed you in the one photo, you get to see what the person at the other end is seeing from your webcam. It's usually, mine happens to appear in the lower left hand corner of my screen. It might be in the upper right hand corner. But you have to be mindful of putting that webcam in a position where they're seeing at their end what you want them to see. That's why I use a separate webcam that can clip it onto the frame of my laptop or I can pick it up and hand maneuver. I have about a six to eight foot um, cord on it so that I have some mobility, especially when we're doing a presentation like reciting a poem or singing a song. I want all the kids to have a chance in front of the camera. When we're doing individual things, I set up what we call the hot seat in front of the webcam. Again, not the laptop webcam, a freestanding webcam. And the kids sit kind of close together so the three of them are in frame and they do their little presentation um, uh, um, three at a two, or, two or three at a time. And we call that going through the hot seat. And they know that they have to quickly, you know, go in and out, change positions, and quietly because the mics are pretty powerful and they pick up all the extraneous noise. Great, thank you very much, ladies. And Kristen B, you have the mic if you like to ask a question. My question. Oh. Can you guys hear me? Yes, we sure can. Okay. Um, can you hear me? Okay. Um, I was wondering if I wanted to show parents something that's going on in my classroom and have them logged into Skype. Is there a, a certain number, the limit that can watch, or I'm not sure about that. Um, I heard it one time used to be 20, but now I think it's unlimited. Um, if anybody has an answer, I know that you can have several different connections in a Skype chat where okay. they're chatting back. Um, I think it might be 20 live connections if they're talking, but if you're just watching, I think it's kind of almost unlimited. Okay, that's great. Thank you. Yeah, that's my understanding of it, Kim. There can be 20 live participants. Um, chatting, you're using the instant messaging, but if you want to use the video, there can only be five participants at a time. But anybody can watch it, you know, they just wouldn't have access to all the tools. Great. Thank right, you. that's what I, yeah, something to that effect. But if you um, Google it or look on the Skype website, um, it has all of those specifics and the limitations um, that, for you. Thank you for asking, Kristen. And Janet, over to you. We've given you the mic. You can activate your mic by clicking on the button in the left bottom hand corner.
Okay, I'm not hearing you, so... Can you hear me now? Okay. Yes. Yeah, sorry, I mixed up my right and left hand. Can you hear me? We sure can. Go right ahead. Okay. okay. Um, I am taking a class uh, from New Mexico State University, and it is a blended class. And they do have the face-to-face -face classes, but I am currently in Florida. And they tried to get me in through Skype, but we were unsuccessful. Because um, that was this new version, I guess, just came out a couple of days ago. I don't know, but that does the teacher need to have like a freestanding microphone in camera? But I tried to get in with one of the students actually who's listening on who's in this class too, Sam. Okay, I think. Were you asking about the equipment that might help set that up to be successful? Yes, ma'am. Okay. I think you can do it um, different ways. One is just with, if you have something built in, built in camera or, uh, I mean, built in webcam and microphone, or you can attach separate um, a USB headset or microphone, a freestanding microphone. I've used that. I've actually used a 999 microphone that a singer would use that has a long cord and use that for my um, audio. And then a webcam, whether it's uh, something to clip on or um, they have even some freestanding ones. Yes, definitely. You can use it both ways where you can use the built-in webcam and the built-in mic. Sometimes uh, the built-in items aren't as conducive to hearing and connecting uh, when you're working with a large group. But if it's just one person, you can use a headset with um, <clears throat> your mic input and your speaker's output. But if you're using a large group, I've, um, in my experience, an external webcam I'm sorry, an external mic and external speakers um, are help the sound be much better quality where you can hear it and they don't have to be right in front of the camera um, in order to be speaking to be able to be heard in the other class. So those are just personal things and you can try it out both ways, but you can just use the built-in stuff or you can also use the, um, the external devices to help supplement the, the audio quality. Okay, I will get a hold of the instructor, and then Sam, who's listening to this, can can help too, and we'll discuss it then between us and see if see if we can get me to hear anybody except Sam at these meetings. <laughs> anyway, uh, thank you very much for answering my question. Great, thank you so much for asking. And Irene, once you add your connections, you click on that connection. And then you can just chat, um, text chat back and forth, or you, there's an option for you to um, activate to connect and call them using your voice chat. Then to add contacts, there's an area with a little plus sign. You click to add your contacts um, using a little plus sign. Are there any questions that we might have missed um, or that haven't been addressed? If so, you can click on with the hand with the little green up arrow. And please feel free to add in your Twitter or your Skype IDs uh, so that we can connect after the session when the chat log is posted to our website. I'm going to go ahead and show my desktop real quick since several of you are asking questions about Skype. <clears throat> and I just saw a question come in and I'll, and I'll um, 
skip to that in just a second. This is my Skype, and I use it every day personally and professionally uh, to connect with others. And we'll give it a second to load. And these are my contacts here in the left-hand side. To add a contact, you just click here, add it, and give it a bit. You can type in their full name or their Skype name and click Add. And then when you do that, there's going to be an option over here. You can click to add them to your contacts. And then it sends them a message that you would like to be added to the contacts. Once you have somebody there, um, you can click on their name to go to them individually. Or you can click on this little drop down menu here. And I'm on a, um, on a PC. So it looks a little bit different on the Mac. <clears throat> but you can also click on their, double click on their name. And then it takes you to that person. It shows their profile, their website link, the time, uh, their birth date, and also shows the time in Arizona. You can call them. You can video call them. You can add people and have um, more than one person in your, your uh, call. So if I click on Reset, I can see this, this is my uh, recent chat right here. So if I wanted to call Peggy, Peggy, you can just disregard it. You don't have to answer it. I can click Call. This is not good. And it shows me who I'm calling. If we wanted to use webcams, we'd click on that right there. And that's how we would activate the calls. Or I can just type in here, down here. If you wanted to dial in using a phone number, you click Call Phones. And this is your, um, if it's an 800 number, you can use this. But if not, you do need to pay to if you're going to um, use dial in a number that's not an 800 number. So that, those are just real quick ways to use Skype and activate in your, um, the chat as well as adding contacts to your Skype platform. OK, do we have any other questions? that we haven't addressed yet? If so, we'd love to have you take the mic. All you need to do is click on the hand with the green up arrow, or you can type in your question or comment in the chat, and we'll be happy to take that for you and address it and answer your question. Our chat log will be posted to our website later this weekend, as well as the MP3 and the MP4, the video of our sessions. And they're posted to our archives and resources page of our website. And I just put that in the chat for you. You can access that later this weekend. And the chat log will show all of the conversation in the chat. And if you'd like the certificate when you exit, yes, you can download their iTunes. You can download all of the past. Uh, shows the MP3 or the MP4s, the videos, to your iPhone, iTouch, any of your MP3 players, MP4 players, or iPhones. And that's the website to access the iTunes U channel, showing right there on the slide. But once you exit the session, um, there's the link to the survey that, in case you don't have the, session, the link open in your browser automatically, you can always email us at live at classroom20.com if for some reason the, the survey doesn't automatically open into your browser. Again, we want to thank Paula and Jan for taking time today to share with us about connecting with Skype. And remember to paste your Twitter or your Skype ID in the chat so that we can have um, 
No, you don't have to buy any credits to activate your account. You should receive an email to allow you to activate your account. But um, yeah, you don't want to pay for that because you don't necessarily need the Skype credits unless you're going to be using it as a telephone to call outbound. Those are really the only times that you need Skype credits. But if you're just going to uh, chat or call online to another computer, then you really don't need to purchase anything with Skype. Yeah, any of the 800-877-8666 numbers, any of those you can dial for free. Um, you can dial out for free on this on the Skype. I use it for some of the WebExes and the, the web conferences that I have to do quite a bit. And I use it online for, for free that way. There's also Skype call recorders that you can use. That way it records the audio call. And if I have questions, I can go back later and replay that MP3. It saves it as an MP3 for me. And then I can go back and access those. Or I can share the call using the MP3 um, to an email and share the MP3 a variety of ways so that others can access that, that Skype call if they weren't available. Yes, definitely, or holding the phone exactly for an hour. So that's why I use Skype when it's an 800 number. I use it whenever possible. Definitely. You know, if you have limited phone minutes or so forth, I definitely use Skype. But yes, please, please contact if you have additional questions that haven't been addressed or if something comes up later that you'd like to um, have answered about via Skype, you can access Paul, um, Paula or Jan or Peggy or I and Lorna anytime about Skype. We use Skype all of the time. But Peggy, Paula and Jan are the experts uh, using Skype in the classroom and connecting with others that way. So we encourage you to follow up, view, and share the archives of our session that are posted to our website later today, and to continue to share and promote these different ways of connecting and ideas on Twitter. And we hope to see you in our future session on February the 12th. And Lorna has a parents' as partner session. Um, it's going to be in Illuminate on Monday evening in the U.S. So please check that out at learncentral.org to get more information on that session. And it is cross-posted at edtechtalk.com. So we hope to see you throughout the week and various webinars online. And then see you next Saturday uh, for February 12th. It's going to be another fantastic session with expert teachers. And take care, everybody. Have a great Saturday. Stay warm. Enjoy the snow or the cooler weather wherever you are in the world. And have a great weekend. Take care, everybody. See you soon. Bye-bye. Yes, Peggy, that's a great question. I know ever since Oprah started using it on her show, I've noticed there's a big trend um, with lots of shows using Skype, news shows. Um, even Nancy Grace uses Skype to have guests call in. I've definitely seen a huge, huge increase in the past year of people trying to connect. Yes, they both use it all the time. Um, but there's been a huge blowout of using Skype ever since um, Oprah did that on her show and using Twitter as well. I do think Skype's going to stay free. I think they're going to have premium, like they have the, the paid sessions if you um, pay teachers if you want to use um, their calling out services as a telephone. But I think most of it's going to stay free. Thank you again so much, Paul and Jan, for joining us. We're so glad that every, that you all find this interesting and valuable. And we we love that you're sharing this with other colleagues. Take care, everybody. I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording. And we will see you.